Hello, and welcome to this webinar presented by Convergent Technologies Digital Transformation Team. The title of the webinar is Expand Your Capabilities with Brevo Access Enterprise. Brevo is one of Convergent's cloud native access control solutions partners. The innovative Brevo solution fits in a small to medium businesses as well as enterprise organizations. Today, Brevo will be showing some of those enterprise capabilities and features. If you do have any questions, please type them into the question and answer box within Zoom, and we will answer all those questions at the end of the presentation. My name is Jeremy McConnell, and I'm a business development manager for the Convergence Digital Transformation Team. I've been with Convergent for 12 years and have really seen the transformation from analog systems to IP systems to systems in the cloud. My team focuses on innovative strategies and solutions to support our colleagues across the globe and to help customers with using digital technologies to enhance business processes and customer experiences and to meet changing business and market requirements. I'm excited to have Brevo here with us today. Dave, who are you and what do you do? Hi there, Jeremy. My name is Dave Williams and I'm vice president of key accounts here at Brevo, really meaning that I own that corporate level relationship between Convergent and Brevo. JJ? Uh, Hi everyone, I'm JJ Jadali. I'm an enterprise sales manager for Brevo and I work with my, my field counterparts at Brevo in supporting our enterprise customers to make sure that they um, have an excellent experience with Brevo um, and they make the most of their investment. And Peter. Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, thanks for having us. So my name is Pete Bauer. I'm a senior regional technical manager here at Brevo. Uh, I'm really just kind of sometimes the boots on the ground, sometimes the the guy helping out with a lot of uh, larger technical deployments uh you know in that enterprise space my job is kind of be that intermediary between product and the sales teams um so again thanks for having us great thank you guys so why innovation why do security systems need to change and evolve number one is to increase security we're dealing with more challenging environments than ever before we also need to gain insight. We want to leverage advanced technology and leverage the data that we're gathering to allow your organization to run more reliably and efficiently. Innovation provides a better user experience. Technology continues to make our lives and our customers' lives easier to use, and users expect that same type of experience. Operating this, these systems should be simple and accessible anywhere. You shouldn't have to focus internal resources on systems that are not your core operation. And lastly, and most importantly, we focus on innovation to solve problems. New solutions solve existing challenges. These are some of digital transformation team's top areas of focus from self-service portals, allowing employees to provision their access credentials with automated workflows connected to HR and logical access systems to computer vision, detecting and classifying security threats in real time, and even supplementing your guard force with roving security robots or supplying anti-drone technology. Today's demonstration revolves around our cloud native systems. Migrating to a cloud native system provides unmatched uptime and reliability, eliminates the need to manage security servers and workstations, provides instant patching and updating, and is accessible anywhere in the world. So let's see, now see what Brevo and their native cloud system can do for you. Dave, please take it away. Sounds great, Jeremy. I'm gonna take control of your screen here and certainly appreciate that. So thanks again to the Convergent team. Uh, certainly appreciate the opportunity to get in front uh, of you folks and, and present our solution today. For those of you that um, may have been in the industry a while or may have heard of our product, we're gonna to talk today about uh, a uh, offering called Brevo Access. Brevo Access is actually the fourth generation of our interface. So when you think about it, and we'll, we'll talk in a little bit more detail, but one of the benefits of being in the cloud and having the product deployed in the cloud is that um, you're always on that latest and greatest revision of the interface without really ever having to lift a finger. You can get that deployed to you. So this is the fourth generation of our interface. And uh, those customers that have been on board with Brevo for nearly 20 years, they're on the exact same revision of the interface as somebody buying the product today. So 
We don't leave customers behind. We certainly bring them along. But for those of you that have, may have had limited exposure to Brevo, or perhaps it's been a while, I think you're going to be pretty impressed with what we've done today to really elevate the product offering and bring us into the enterprise level. So just a quick commercial for any of you that are gonna be at GSX, which is hard to believe it's just a couple of days away, whether you be on the Convergent team or you happen to be an end user, if you'd like to see the product in action, please come join us at the Brevo booth. Um, we'll be in booth 3031. And as you can see there, uh, the afternoon of Monday and the afternoon on Tuesday, we'd be more than happy to buy you a beverage uh, at the event as well. So let's talk a little bit about um, what, why Brevo and what about Brevo makes, uh, makes sense. So if you take a look at it in the upper left-hand corner, I want to point out a couple of different things um, on this slide that obviously you can read through the points, but a couple of things I want to highlight. Number one is in the upper left-hand corner, 330,000 managed entries. What we're talking about is doors really, or it could be, you know, elevators or gates or things like that. But what that number signifies, as far as we know, we have become the largest access control system on the planet today. When you think about that, all of the controllers, all of the hardware, everything communicates up into the cloud. And we're not new to it. We're not new to it at all. As you can see, that's spread around 44,500 commercial accounts. So 44,500 end users have put their faith in us and our product. We'll talk a little bit, uh, JJ Will, about the mobile credentials, but as you can see, we're over a million now mobile credentials. So a million people are walking around the globe today, leveraging their mobile device to gain access into the facility. So certainly, um, while it might not be the number of, uh, or reach quite the total number of credentials we have in the system, um, I would tell you the adoption rate is pretty fantastic. In another slide, I'll talk to you a little bit about those cybersecurity audits down there in the, in the lower left-hand corner. But the other number that I want to point out uh, here is in that up, upper right-hand corner. Because the product deploys, in, in essence, kind of the same way you would deploy a wireless router in your house, all it needs is a broadband connection to the internet, right? And so we've been able to deploy the product in over 43 countries around the globe. So this isn't just limited to the United States or United States locations, but actually uh, had the ability to be deployed around the globe. So let's talk about, you know, why, why Brevo? What, what is it about Brevo? As I mentioned, number one is being uh, in the marketplace for 20 years is certainly what I would say something that, that we're happy to hang our hat on. But also, we were the first company in the entire security industry to bring a cloud product offering. So we're not new to the game. We've been around. We certainly uh, have uh, really been a, a pioneer in the industry. And with that comes a lot of different things. Um, number one is we've always been built from day one on a true IT platform. This isn't a, a situation where we ask the end user to take a box or a server and to load it you know, into an IT closet and into a rack and then maybe kind of browse into that. No, no, we are absolutely a true IT platform and we were created in the cloud. And so we've never had to think about shoehorning an on-premise product into the cloud. It's always been true cloud from the beginning. Um, when we talk about a top tier service, um, that is both to our reseller, uh, such as Convergent, but also into the end user community as well. We understand that product um, and new installations can sometimes be complex. We will absolutely help you with people like JJ on this call or Peter uh, who's on this call we also have a uh, large group of uh, technical support folks. We have inside sales and just a lot of different surf, uh, service capabilities to really help and assist not only Convergent, but the end users as well. Also, the lower total cost of ownership. Now, I know every product provider out there today, for the most part, is going to tell you they have the lower total cost of ownership. Well, we've actually built a couple of calculators uh, that talk about our total cost of ownership. And it'll allow you to compare what an on-premise solution might be compared to a Brevo solution. Uh, we can prove to you over the life of the project uh, that it is going to be a lower total cost of ownership to go Brevo than it would be to say to go to a client server. Uh, there at the bottom of the screen, you can see some different awards that we've run, certainly uh, proud about that. 
can see some of the different publications that we've been featured in, as well as a number of the certifications that we have around our product. If you remember back on that last slide, uh, we've got 12 years of security audits that we can certainly provide uh, both to uh, convergent or certainly end users that want to see those certifications or they want to see those audits that have taken place. Certainly happy to provide those. So when we think about over those, you know, 45 and a half thousand commercial end user accounts, um, some people uh, that might have been exposed to Brevo in the past may say, oh, Brevo's in that small to medium market. We absolutely are in that small to medium market, but now we're into the enterprise marketplace. Uh, I'm not going to point out specific logos on this screen. I know that you can certainly uh, take a look and read them yourselves, but the level of customer that we've now been exposed to and we help service and support is pretty significant. So when you think about um, whether you be on the convergence side or the end user side, you can certainly put your faith uh, into a product offering. You can imagine the vetting that has gone on um, around our product offering uh, to be an acceptable choice uh, for some of these end users. So you can certainly put your, your trust and faith in us. So to highlight a little bit of the difference here between Brevo and say a, a, an on-premise solution. So as you can see there, we've got a couple of different columns. You've got on the Brevo side, you've got what the provider needs to um, provide. So that would be you know, typically the end user or it could be uh, the reseller. And then you can see what in the Brevo world, all that's required, all that the consumer needs to bring really at the end of the day is the client device. So um, certainly very easy we provide the software application, the infrastructure, the operating system, the virtualization layer, the servers, the data center. So in the Brevo world, we're the provider. Now on the left-hand side of the screen, um, you can certainly see what the end user has to deliver or the consumer, right? They have to not only supply the client device, but the infrastructure software, the operating system, the virtualization layer, the physical servers, the data center. Uh, but what also then ties into that is a lot of additional items. So you think about it, it's the power, it's the network, it's the redundancy, it's the maintenance, it's the system backups and everything else here that happens to be uh, listed there. So those are all things that in, in most cases an end user wouldn't think about, um, but are absolutely part of what needs to be provided. So again, uh, in the Brevo world, being the provider, we provide all of that and the customer just simply, simply has to supply a device. And when we say that, we mean that they just bring a laptop, it could be a tablet, it could be their mobile device to manage their solution. So in our world, it's just simply called bring your own device. So I know that there's a lot of data going on in this screen and uh, I'm gonna go uh, rather quickly through it, just certainly because of, of timing that we have today. But you can see we've got some operating statistics, we've got communication security, we've got data security, and we've got the operating environment. A couple of items just to simply point out, and again, if you're in the convergent world, you can certainly reference this in the recording uh, and, and certainly read the screen. But the biggest thing here is down there in the lower left-hand corner, it's outbound only through port 443. So your end users don't have to do all of this network um, port opening up, if you will, that they're going to allow both inbound and outbound. No, all that we require in the Brevo world is outbound on port 443. So it allows the end user to keep a lot of the data uh, protection mechanisms that they put in place, whether it be uh, firewalls or you know, need to dedicate an IP address or whatever that might be. So uh, the communication security is absolutely paramount. We have white papers to back that information up uh, that we call our information security white paper. So that brings us um, to what I'm really excited to talk to you about today. And, and uh, in a second here, I'm gonna hand it over to JJ. But if you'd been exposed to Brevo in the past, it was really one size fits all. Uh, uh, the latest uh, version before Brevo Access, we had a product called Brevo On Air. One size fits all, doesn't matter if you have one card reader, or if you have a million card readers, you're leveraging Brevo On Air. Now there were different certainly capabilities that layer in a la carte, uh, such as mobile credentialing, or it could be um, you know, tying in uh, access control events, it could be um, you know, some other different items that we can certainly layer in. But uh, what we decided to do is we broke off Brevo Access into three different editions, and it really allows you to right size the product offering for the end user. 
And by that, as you can see, a couple of different things in here um, between standard and professional and enterprise. What you're going to get is everything that's available in standard is available in professional plus some additional. additional items. Now, I'm not going to run through what each and every one of these uh, has the ability to do, because I really do think it's uh, certainly important uh, when we get to the product demonstration that Peter has the appropriate time to go through this. But a couple of things that I do just simply want to point out is um, maybe you've got an end user that wants to have a uh, longer data retention. If you notice the last line on an, in each one of those, uh, we increment that up uh, by a year. So if they want to be able to go back and take a look at history in the standard edition, they can go back up to one year. In professional, they can go up to two years. In enterprise, they can go up to three years. Now, Peter will be showing you in a little bit some of the different capabilities that we have in enterprise. Uh, so I won't you know, take a look uh, or you know, a, a run down that list, but lots of different capabilities. We make it easy. We've got some data sheets and we also have a page on our website that really has tick marks that can show you the difference between the product offerings. And uh, we, we can certainly help and assist and uh, right size the product for the customer. But we do now offer, and I would certainly say we've elevated our game into the enterprise level like we never have before. So when we talk about the Revo product portfolio, there's a lot of different capabilities that we have the ability to layer on. And what I would tell you is it creates an incredible amount of stickiness um, between the end user, the reseller, and Brevo, right? Because now it's not just you're buying a product from uh, supplier A, supplier B, supplier C, but having all of these different capabilities within the Brevo offering allows a more unified conversation between Brevo uh, convergent and the end users. So there's a lot of different capabilities that we have within our product portfolio. We've got video, we've got visitor management, um, we have different applications within uh, within the offering. You can see obviously being based in the cloud. We've got our control panels. Uh, JJ will talk about those here in just a little bit. Uh, we have our line of readers where you have the ability to communicate via Bluetooth from your mobile device into that reader. Um, so uh, a lot of different capabilities, but right down there in the center, uh, and I don't think we give it enough credit on this slide, is our open API. What our open API allows us to do is to allow integrations into lots of different things and lots of different offerings. So um, this slide does a little bit better job of kind of encapsulating what we are able to do through that RESTful API and with our integrations. So with our RESTful API, we can connect to lots of different things. That can be to video uh, providers, that could be to, to products um, that do mustering or could be, you know, um, things like an identity connector. Uh, the identity connector, and I'll give you a little uh, quick snapshot on what that is, is the identity connector allows you to really decrease the amount of keystrokes required on a project or you know, as an end user manages their solution, but it also decreases the potential for human error. Most end users today are leveraging some sort of identity database, uh, such as Okta or Azure or Active Directory or G Suite. And we have a connector. And what that does is that allows uh, that connector to push employees into Brevo, but also revoke employees um, access uh, from the facility should they be offboarded. So the onboarding and offboarding of employees is automatic between the two systems and between the two products, um, which really number one, obviously reduces the amount of time, uh, but it certainly reduces the uh, amount of potential errors. So with that, I would like to pass uh, the presentation over to JJ Jadali to talk about the Brevo Access Platform. All right, Dave, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, it was a great introduction to Brevo. Um, so everybody, thanks so much for joining us today. Um, what I'm prepared to talk about is to give you a, a quick uh, dive into the software to give you a sense of what makes us a little bit different from what you might be familiar with with physical access control systems um, over the past 20 to 30 years. I'll dig into the hardware associated a little bit. Um, and then once I'm done, Pete's going to hop into a demo to give you a better sense of um, how the system operates and how it could potentially be applicable in yours or your customer's environment. 
All right. Um, so this is just a, a quick look at, at what we call the event tracker. So as you'll see, when Pete logs into the system for the demo, the event tracker is the first thing that you'll see. We hope that that one of the first things you'll notice about our user interface is that it might look a little bit different from what you're accustomed to with access control. It's it's modern, it's fresh, it's intuitive. And you'll notice a lot about data. We do a lot with data. We understand that as we've molded um, our platform to be a one size fits all, as Dave mentioned, to more of a fit for the enterprise space, that we want to do things like incorporate data to make the most of all of that valuable, rich data that you've been collecting in your access system, but not really doing much with. So you'll see the, 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 the data trends toolbar at the top of the event tracker. That just gives you a quick snapshot, a quick glance of how your activity is looking um, over a given period of time. Pete will show you in the demonstration when you hover over it, um, you get a little bit more detail as it relates to your critical events and your access events and things like that. And just a, a quick snapshot of our Breeble mobile pass. Um, I'll hop into the mobile credentials a little bit later, um, but we do do an excellent job of making that process of administering credentials, um, mobile credentials for your employees, very simple, as well as um, the experience for your employees, um, very simple and easy. So this is just a, a quick snapshot of a few of the tools that we deliver for our customers, and I'll touch on each one of them briefly because, again, Pete's going to hop into the UI to give you a, a better sense of how those look and operate. We talked about the event tracker trends on the top left. You can see um, the, the dialog box, if you will, that pops up when you, when you hover over some of that data. Um, and all of that information can be very helpful, especially at just a quick glance by hovering over a data bar. On the top right, you can start to see why we've become such a nice fit for enterprise applications. Uh, global multi-site customers have turned into somewhat uh, of our bread and butter in the fact that we deliver some tools like GlobalView that make the process of managing access control very efficient. So with GlobalView, there, there's two primary things that we're trying to deliver with that. Um, number one is a real-time sense of what's happening across all of your facilities as it relates to critical events. So critical event management is one. Um, and then the other is system health. Um, we've recognized in lots of other systems in our industry, CCTV, for example, uh, health of the system is, is critical. If the camera goes down, you want to know about it right away. Um, we, we think no different of access control panels, right? That's, that's your entry to your facilities and your employees. So what this tool does is give you a, a quick sense of what's happening across all of my sites. And, and you'll see a few widgets at the top um, with more data related to critical events, access events, how long panels have been down, if you have any, that again, are just supposed to be um, quickly referenceable and make your job as an access control administrator easier. Um, on the bottom left, uh, Dave talked a little bit about Identity Connector. Um, that's our, our integration for identity management. I would say in the enterprise space, there is very few of our customers that don't take advantage of this because of the valuable benefits that it delivers. I'll talk about that in a little bit more detail a little bit later. One of the, I think, most unique things about Brevo's platform is what you see in the bottom right, and that's Data Explorer. And Pete's going to do a demo of that a little bit later as well, but that is where we leverage data analytics to um, essentially provide a dashboard for our customers to have visual representations of their data so they can better understand uh, perhaps the sus suspicious patterns or trends that might be happening in your access data, or uh, your real estate department might want to have a better understanding of uh, real estate occupancy or real estate usage across your facilities. Again, another reason why all of this rich data that's being collected in your access control system over the past 20 years hasn't necessarily been harvested as it should have. And now we're providing the tools that allow you to do that um, and provide benefits not only for security, but for other departments across your organization. A few more quick things that we'll point out, and, and again, a lot of this Pete's gonna, Pete is going to show as well. Um, we do an excellent job of integrating with, with video surveillance. Um, we work with platforms that bring video into Brevo, as you can see in the top left. We also work with enterprise platforms um, that where we actually push Brevo data into the user interface of the video surveillance platform. So we do a lot of neat things with video integration, and really the purpose there is just to make the process of managing security more efficient for you in a single platform as opposed to multiple. 
Um, on the top right, you see that we, we've introduced artificial intelligence with video analytics via a tool that we call Snapshot, where essentially we, we're, with that tool, I like to say we're replacing a, a log of, of data like you see in the event tracker with words, with actual pictures. What that artificial intelligence does is it grabs the best image of the individual and it logs that kind of like an access control log that you can search through. So it's a really helpful tool. Going back to that theme of data, on the bottom left, you can see that we've introduced anomaly detection. For those of you that are or have been involved in the IT industry in the past, you know that anomaly detection is not something new. Uh, it's something that the cybersecurity world has leveraged for quite some time, um, but it's relatively new in our world. So we've delivered a tool that uh, essentially begins to understand the relation between cardholders and facilities and readers and the time those uh, cardholders gain access to provide you with anomalies so that these we can point those out to you so you know a little bit um, better of what's happening across your facilities and what might be odd. And then on the bottom right, um, we provide an occupancy management tool um, that provides a, a simple to use user interface that allows you to kind of get a better sense of how many people are in any one of your facilities at any given time. All right, um, just going to dig into a couple of the features that uh, that we think are pretty valuable in the enterprise space. Obviously, integrated video is one. Um, I've mentioned that we integrate with a number of different enterprise platforms, whether it is Eagle Eye, Milestone, Exact Vision, and many others. Um, we do a great job of creating an efficient platform for our customers to manage both access and video. We also do a pretty neat job of integrating that video into the mobile application, um, again, just for ease of use and efficiency and things like that. So Dave talked about this. You'll notice this is probably the third time we're talking about this on, on the presentation, but it's because it's one of those integrations that delivers really, really strong efficiency to our customers. As Dave mentioned, essentially what the integration with Brevo and your identity management platform does, and I would say 95 plus percent of the customers that we work with use Azure Active Directory or Okta for identity management. Um, when you sync Brevo with that platform, essentially what you're doing is you're eliminating the manual dentry, uh, data entry for all of your cardholders. So all of that work goes away from the SOC operator. The only thing that you need to do as a SOC operator would be to assign a credential, which typically you want to do anyways. Um, on the other side of the equation, when HR or IT or whoever manages that Okta platform or Azure Active Directory uh, suspends a, a, an employee or terminates an employee, that sync automatically suspends the card user in Brevo. So I would say one of the most important aspects of Identity Connector is the fact that your system and your data, your cardholder data in Brevo is always of the highest integrity. Going to hop into mobile a little bit. I mentioned that this was one of the strong suits of our platform, and it's because we've been doing it for so long. As, as Dave mentioned, we've been a cloud company since, since the beginning, since 1998. So it's been over 20 years now. Um, and mobile has always been a part of our product set. So over the years, we've developed the platform to primarily do two things, become easier to use, more intuitive, more efficient, but yet be robust and have that feature set that the customers need at their fingertips. So this is just a quick snapshot, and, and Pete does an excellent job of providing a mobile demo, and, and we'll hop into that in a little bit later, but this is just a quick snapshot of the Brevo Mobile Pass, which is what employees use to gain access to doors. And then on the right hand side is our administrative app um, that Brevo system administrators use when they need to administer Brevo on the run. Another quick look at the mobile credentials. What you see there is our magic button. That's one thing that we have built into our app just to make that experience for your employees much easier. Um, and Pete will show you a little bit uh, more of that later. And this is just a, a quick few snapshots of um, the Brevo Access mobile management app um, that system administrators use. Again, I think one of the great things about this application is that while we maintain an, an intuitive platform for, for ease of use, you can do a lot in the mobile application, things like lockdown or right at your fingertips. Um, so it's a great tool for customers to take advantage of. All right, so that was a, a quick jump into the software. I'll, I'll talk about our hardware real quick because I want to make sure Pete has enough time for, for a demo. Um, so this is just a, a quick snapshot of the Brevo hardware um, that's required. As Dave mentioned, this is a serverless app application, right? No servers, no software, 100% in the cloud, UI access, access anytime, anywhere. We've got a few different flavors of access control panels. 
Um, on the far left, you see our ACS 300. That's our two door access control panel. Um, in the middle, you see the ACS 100. That's our combined uh, control panel card reader for single doors. Um, and then on the far right, you'll see our, 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 our larger panel, if you will, that scales up to 30 doors. Um, but of course, um, being a, a native cloud application, you can have an unlimited number of readers and panels and users, et cetera, on your Brevo platform. Um, this is just a, a quick snapshot of the all-in-one control panel reader. Um, we call it, again, the ACS 100. You can have a keypad option if you wanted to incorporate code into your authentication process. Quick snapshot of the two-door access control panel installed on the edge or back in the IT room on the wall. It's very flexible. And then again, the, the, the big guys, the ACS 6100, this is what allows you to scale for those larger installations that we have in, in the enterprise space. And we also make our own smart readers as well. So Brevo smart, rate, smart readers are not proprietary to us. Um, they can be used with other access systems as well. But one of the nice things that we deliver with it is Bluetooth connectivity within it, which allows for a more secure mobile credential authentication process. And I, I really love this, this piece of hardware right here. I think this is one thing that allows us to be more flexible and fit into more applications than might meet the eye in the access control world. So this is our cellular module, our cellular network module. So if you have facilities or sites that might ha not have a, a reliable network, um, IT network, or no network at all, this is an excellent tool to deploy access control at remote sites that might be a little bit further off the grid than, than your typical office. And that's all I got. Thanks so much, Pete. Over to you. Hey, thanks, JJ. I think we should be seeing uh, my login screen right now, right? We are. Fantastic. Well, uh, thanks for uh, Dave and JJ, obviously running through the, the big picture, who Brevo is, learning a little bit about it. I hope everyone kind of has come to the table to understand that, you know, Brevo has been doing cloud long before cloud was cool, I like to say, right? We've been doing this a long time. Uh, so we've got a, a great track record in it. Um, but I'm here to show you kind of the user interface, right? The things that I get excited about as a techie guy, you know? Uh, so pretty much, you know, as JJ and Dave have done well at painting the picture, um, this is an access from anywhere type of a platform, right? With little to absolutely no IT lift because you plug the panel up and it works. You grab onto your browser of choice, Chrome, Safari. If you uh, prefer Edge for some reason, have at it, right? So you go to access.brevo.com. Um, as an administrator of the system, I log in with an email and a password. Uh, you'll notice I have the ability to log into many systems. I'm going to I'm an administrator on quite a few of them. So I'll grab our, our main sales demo here, our Aries systems, and we'll simply just log in to uh, the user interface as an administrator. So the first and foremost thing that you're probably seeing is uh, this event tracker, okay? What we're currently uh, logged on to is showing the verify user um, screen and all of the events that are happening across all of my sites on the enterprise. This one account, the way that the topology works is that general account, multiple sites. So we're gonna see access events coming in through here, failed access, unknown credential, valid access. As someone swipes at a reader, when we're on this verify user, if they have an image in their profile, they'll actually, we'll see those images roll through, okay? The other thing that we have within right first and foremost on the event tracker is that trends analysis that JJ had touched on. So what this is giving us is relative to the way that we classified the different types of events, I now have this chart indicating the different types of events that have happened, right? We've got critical warning informational events across a period of time. If I hover over these, what I can kind of tell is for instance, on the seventh between the two and 3 a.m. timeframe, you know, uh, we had 87 critical events and uh, 525 warning events and 513 informational events. The dotted line that goes through all of this is actually that same time frame a week prior and those same counts. So we have this great reference point to understand that there was this time frame that like something's changed. We really need to dig into this and see what's been going on within our system. Of course, just like anything else, we can go ahead and you know filter all of this out. If I only wanted to see 
you know, events and stuff from the Bethesda and Berlin sites, I can go ahead and filter that out. I can filter it down to the types of events, what day and so on right here from the events page. Um, I spoke a minute ago about how we can categorize different events, what will populate that data for us. So on an account basis, uh, we can move these critical events, warning or informational to what's pertinent for our organization. Maybe a door ajar isn't critical for my organization, right? Maybe that's a warning event. So I would simply drag and drop this bar over to the appropriate column and do so across all the different uh, event types that I have. Another great component of you know, events and tracking is something that JJ uh, stopped on there, which is our Brevo snapshot feature. Uh, this snapshot feature allows you to go to, let's say, Thursday last week and get some amount of information uh, pulled off of integrated cameras. So what it's going to do is it's going to take a snapshot of uh, a camera clip and bring forward the best facial image of someone coming through a door. And here we have is our CEO, Steve Van Til, coming through one of the headquarters doors. It's going to give us that face forward and give us a good reference point to understand that this is Steve and it's not someone just using his card. From there, we can kind of go through Global View and Data Explorer. Global View is giving us exactly that, a big picture overview across the US or multiple continents as we scale these systems. And it gives you, you know, that health and some information uh, across this account. You know, no longer is access control just opening doors. Now it's health status and it's data and analytics. You know, so what we're showing here is the ability to just come in and manage the system in a, in a, in a more efficient way. I can zoom down uh, through here and see these blue and red orbs. The red orb would indicate that there's critical events going on. I could click on the critical event for the Bethesda office and see some of those events. We've got some failed access, uh, deleted users trying to make attempts there. We can make notes for other administrators. We can clear those events, uh, whatever we need to do. We also have some more data across the top. So we can see here that at this point in time, we've got 385 critical events across the account. And that's actually up 3.2% from last week. So we want to know what's going on. Well, if I click on details, I can see that the bulk or the lion's share of these critical events are actually failed access on authorized door uses. Uh, we can go down from there and you know, there's a couple of deactivated users, but this is what's totaling out that number. We also have access events in general. How is this system being used? Well, over 2,000 access events already this week, and that's down about 2% from last week. And then, of course, we have offline devices. So there's nine offline devices across my enterprise today. Uh, we can see that the file room dropped offline a minute ago. Uh, the you know, remote office site has been down for 16 hours. So someone's got to get on that, you know. Uh, the next part, uh, the data explorer is what I'd really... We really like to dive deep on, um, you know, the data explorer in effect is a, a visual, a visualization tool, so to speak, for you as, as a, a, a customer, right? What we can do here is we can build these different charts and graphs um, based on quite a few different types of categories. What I've done here is build out a couple of uh, recent activity sites and doors um, and a recent activity, but giving me an indication of, you know, utilization. How are we using these different sites? So, you know, this uh, graph here is going to show me the number of doors throughout all of my sites. Based on the size and color of the square, we can see that this particular site has 33. If I come over to Berlin, they've only got one. It's pretty easy to kind of run down. I've got this bubble map here indicating recent activity. So here in Berlin, we've got 57,000 events going on. Well, I could take that down to say, you know, event name, what type of events are happening throughout all of my different systems. We've got, of course, open events. That's probably logical on an access control system, right? So we could remove those open events and pull forward the different types of things. I got a whole mess of failed access unknown credentials uh, here on my account, like 69,000 of them. That's something that's kind of crazy. Well, we can keep digging down in. So we could now come down to, all right, well, what device are these more inherently happening at? Again, bubble maps going around and we're seeing the Berlin office to be the largest culprit. All right, so we zoom down again and we can go to you know a host of different things here. We can also pull this out as a CSV 
and export um, maybe the users that are most inherently uh, creating these issues. The uh, recent activity utilization chart that I built up here is more a representation of today's climate, right? People are going back into offices, but we also have enterprises that are trying to figure out if certain offices are being used or not. Here, I can simply build this graph out to show, all right, well, in Berlin, you know, I've got 47 users that are coming back in. And on this basis of uh, about a week's period here, uh, you know, we're having about, you know, 57,000 events uh, across 47 users. I can pare that down to just a simple number of hours. I can very easily come through here and go, oh, well, you know, I'm only getting two users coming in uh, to the UK sites or Mexico City. I've only got one. Maybe those are places that we need to, you know, kind of close that down. I could also, again, zoom down in here and I could flip this over to, for instance, the device. So now in the Bethesda third floor office, what are the most used doors that are happening? Maybe this is a conference room that, you know, is in a different suite of the building that we could probably pull off of our lease, right? Uh, you can see here that the third floor has only got one person that's used it so far. You know, maybe this is something we can scale back on. Um, so again, like JJ had kind of mentioned, what this is, is really a utilization tool or an ability to see all that data that most access control systems have always had. They've just, you know, not put it on the forefront for you to use as an end user. Okay. From there, we've got our devices page. Uh, this is a, a great uh, tool as well. What this is going to do is take every um, site and segregate it out. So by site, I can come through here and see the different devices that are actually on it. This is a live device status page. So you can see in Amsterdam, uh, I've actually got a controller offline. So the Amsterdam controller has been down since 9-1. It last checked in at this time frame. Our panels all check in at five minute intervals. So if I came down in here to the Bethesda third floor, what I could see is all the different devices. Um, you know, I can jump in here and see individual cameras. So this is the experience center camera. It's actually integrated to a door. So as an administrator, I can come in here and say, hey, um, so-and-so is at the door. I need to let them in. I go ahead and I unlock. And as you can see, the blue light flips on. I'm out here in Chicago right now. That light flipped in Bethesda about like that, right? It's very fast. There's really no lag. Um, I can come into different door cards. That's what a lot of this stuff is that you're seeing here. So if I was to come into, for instance, the Kiva entrance, this is where I'm seeing the door is open, right? So this has a door contact on it. If the door got closed, it would actually show a closure. Um, reader status, I can of course pulse this door from here. You'll see the padlock fly open, indicating the pulse duration of the door. Okay, so it closes back up. This is where I can either set an open schedule so I can come in here and, you know, universal eight to five. So 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., save it. This door will be unlocked during that period. Or for instance, I could go ahead and do just a momentary, an override. So I could sit, sit, hit set override. And let's say this was on a banquet door and I needed this thing to be open until five o'clock today. Well, that's great. Unlock until a certain time, five o'clock, and I hit save. This door will now open till five, and after five, go back to its locked state. Um, you know, you can see as I scroll down, this is all the different sites within this very large account, right? I can segregate all this out if I just wanted to see doors, and I just wanted to see, you know, the Bethesda and the Colorado warehouse. Now that's all I'm going to see um, on a filter standpoint. Um, we continue to go down, like uh, JJ had mentioned, we have video integrations, so I can, from one pane of glass, come in here and manage my cameras. Uh, still from this view as well, I can jump on and unlock those integrated doors from my live camera view. Uh, we, you know, we've got a host of different reporting functionality, so uh, a lot of those are canned reports that we can create. So here's a bunch of the canned reports, uh, all user reports, activity reports. Um, pretty much you can click on them, create the report, and then you can actually schedule them. So we can schedule particular reports that are pertinent to your organization on a daily, weekly, or a monthly basis to automatically go out to a set of, of email recipients. Um, when we talk about user management, I'm just going to jump into the user database so we can see, um, you know, I've got about 
1,062 users currently within this account. Uh, you can scroll through, we can search for them by name, uh, general status, are they suspended or active? If you notice up top, these yellow ones are indicating that they are in a suspended state. It's pretty easy as an administrator to just come back in here and reinstate if you're doing this manually. But of course, some of that process can be done by our integrations with those identity connectors like Azure AD, Okta, and G Suite. Um, so if I was to come back in here and say, pick on a particular person, JJ, I'm gonna pick on you for a minute here. So if I came into JJ's profile or you know, if I was adding a brand new one, I'd hit the add user button and I'd come in here and start filling this page out. I'd put in the first name, last name, we put in an email address for the purpose of being able to push out a mobile pass, okay? Um, we just kind of continue to roll down the page. We can create custom fields, things that are pertinent to your organization, whether it's department or whether it's, you know, um, vaccination date or who's your supervisor, whatever it is, we can create a custom field for you to input that data right here in one place. Within that user, we then assign them to a group. These groups obviously dictate where I can go, where JJ can go when he gets to the office, can he go in you know, the IT room door? And if so, what time? So groups are kind of giving that capability. And then you continue to go down and now you give this user a credential. This is where we could assign either a card from the card database, you know, or this is where we could go ahead and push out a mobile pass. So this is how easy it is from uh, a cardholder perspective as an admin, I know so and so starting up on a certain date. I come in here, I hit assign credential, and I hit mobile pass. Email pulls from the profile. When I click assign credential, what happens is, is the email recipient, this user, is going to get an email that looks very similar to this. Okay, it's going to have them go to the app store and download the the Brevo mobile pass, and they hit add my pass right here, and it gives them the capability to then log right in to the mobile pass itself which is this. So this is, oh, this is the Brevo mobile pass right here. Um, I have a single magic button deployed on mine where if I had, you know, 150 doors of access to my privilege, I could hit this single button if we've deployed Bluetooth readers and it would go ahead and unlock the door that I'm closest to. I also have the ability to create favorite or saved doors and do things like uh, mobile biometrics. You can see on a couple of these, there's like a little fingerprint. So for that LCB hops room door, for instance, when I click on this to try and unlock it, it's asking for my phone's authentication method or it won't unlock the door. If I go ahead and show my face to it, it unlocks the door and on I go. So if you have those high security rooms, we have a native, completely inherent feature that you just tick a box in the door settings and you now have two factor through effectively facial recognition, okay? So that's the mobile pass. Um, you do get a few recent activities from the actual user profile here at the bottom of the, the profile. Um, and again, this is where we can kind of suspend. So JJ, sorry, bud, no more access for you. Okay, I'll reinstate you. Um, so that's users. Um, we have a complete badging solution right built into our, our user interface. So we can create different badge templates um, so if I came in here and went to the employee badge, we can create uh, the background, what information is going to be on here, all the way down to a barcode. So if you were using, you know, um, time and attendance and it required a barcode, we could pull a custom field such as like employee ID number and go ahead and make that employee ID number from the profile, populate a barcode so that they could use the same badge to get in the door, show who they are, as well as swipe themselves in and out for time and attendance. So some really cool stuff there. Um, uh, administration, I really want to touch on before I uh, turn it over for questioning. So, you know, firm. So with the administrators, these are folks that can actually get into the user interface here, right? So our administrators have, you know, some certain privileges. If I jump on Brian's here, we can see that I can segregate this administrator's privilege on a site by site basis. So I could give uh, Brian access to two of the sites or all of the sites like he has here, uh, some of the groups, but maybe not all of them because the groups will pull over what users that Brian can see when he logs into the, the user interface here. But that's not it. That's not all of it. What we also have is the ability to apply roles 
to these administrators. What that means is, is I can pare down what this administrator actually sees in terms of this left-hand column, right? If I jump into roles, I can use example of, you know, credential manager. Maybe I've got that person at a front desk and all they can do, or all I want them to be able to do anyway, is add a card, associate it to a group and hand it over. They don't need global view or data explorer. They don't need the ability to run reports or even jump into door status and unlock doors. Maybe I want them to be able to see what doors are there, but I don't want them to be able to unlock it. I can select all of that for these folks. And so as you see me scroll down the page here, you can see every category pretty much from this left-hand side, I can pare down so that they only have what they need when they log in. So it alleviates the stress that someone might feel if they have too much privilege and the stress that an administrator on a higher level might feel because you're afraid someone's gonna bugger something up. You know. Um, the other piece of the administrative side of this is we also have a mobile administrative app, okay? So that mobile administrative app allows any admin the ability to jump in here and you know view activity. Okay, so I'm seeing the same activity that I was in that event, uh, in that event log here for the Bethesda third floor site or the Bogota or Cape Town. Okay, I can also jump in and manipulate users. We can add users from here. We can also jump in uh, to the different user profiles and you know revoke or suspend this user from my pocket. Walking down the street here in Chicago, you know, um, we can come into doors. Uh, here at Bethesda, and I could say, for instance, pulse open that blue demo door right here for my admin app. Um, we can view video, so that same experience center, um, you know, door that I was showing you guys before, it's right here. We hit unlock blue demo door, and you see that light light up just like it did in the UI. The other cool thing about the admin app is we have the ability to initiate the lockdown functionality of our system. So I can initiate this lockdown from my mobile administrative app, and it'll actually actually initiate that lockdown within the UI. Okay, so when I come back in here to events, you're actually seeing this red bar across the top indicating that the whole system has been put in lockdown. If I click on review, it's going to give me an indication of what doors were inherent to that lockdown. Not only does it lock all these down, but it also sends out notification to all admins and any Brevo mobile pass user that there has been a lockdown. Now, as an administrator, I've cleared everything. I know everything's safe and everybody's good. I can come in here and I can clear this lockdown. It removes it from the system and again, notifies all those mobile pass users and administrators. So a lot to fit in. Uh, there's certainly other features within our UI that um, I haven't necessarily kind of run over, but it, it's a lot of information. Um, I guess what we could do is kind of see if there's any questions or any insights if I've uh, maybe missed anything. Yeah, thanks, Peter. Yeah, if anybody has any questions, please go ahead and put them in the Q&A um, or the, the, the Zoom chat and we'll answer those. Um, in the meantime, I did want to thank everyone for attending and the Brevo team, JJ, Dave, you guys did an awesome job uh, providing a lot of information on your systems. Peter, your demonstration was incredible. I would say if anybody is playing uh, Innovation Bingo, with why the digital transformation team is using Brevo. I mean, you guys are checking off all the all the innovative things that we are seeing in the market that customers are wanting from automation uh, to self-service portals, digital IDs, cloud technology, use it anywhere. You know, one thing that I think Brevo is, is the only security company that does it is the data explorer tool that you guys have. Like you said, Peter, is all this information has been available and you can kind of pull reports here and there and try and gather some of that information, but nothing as, as feature rich and as usable as that data explorer tool. So, you know, I would say that anybody who's more interested really needs to contact us and, and dig more into what that tool can do. Um, but it's incredible. Obviously, I appreciate everybody's time today. If you guys are at GSX, definitely stop by the Convergent and Brevo booths. Uh, our emails are on the screen to contact us and, you know, I'm just happy to walk anyone through this further as to how we can uh, help you with your digital transformation technology roadmap.